A totalitarian system is being set up under our watchful eye as corporations use their government arms to sign bills into law which will ensure their tight grip of this system. As it breaks apart, we catch glimpses of their objectives and see their plans taking full effect successfully. The globalists intend to usher in a new monetary system on the ashes of the current failed model while posing as the saviors, ceding the control to their scaly fingers. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to talk about the global economic collapse. There are certainly some major things going on right now. One of those is one of the biggest banks in the world, Dutch Bank, announcing their strategy 2020 financial targets. And you can read those if you'd like. But what I want to highlight is this at the bottom. Furthermore, the plan is based on the elimination of the Dutch Bank common share dividend for the fiscal year 2015-2016. So guess what? They're not going to be giving out any dividends anymore. But of course they say, we're going to commence in 2017. Perhaps they will. But they're stopping their dividend. This is absolutely huge news that really slipped under the radar. But it triggered something within me, and I believe that this is front page news that's why i'm bringing it to you right at the front here now what does this mean why would a company stop its dividends remember that a lot of corporations investment funds and what have you invest in corporations that pay out a dividend and this is a really key indicator for a lot of these companies they look at the dividend and think that If the market is volatile, you can always rely on a dividend to pay out. Dividends are very important for these investment purposes. Not necessarily the average individual or the trader. We're looking at long-term big money investments. And Dutch Bank here, one of the biggest in the world, stopping their dividend. I believe this is huge news and it signals what's happening in the economy that things aren't looking too pretty and all those little pennies that adds up quite a bit so they need to take those back and use it for other purposes look at this pfizer and allergan begin merger talks a deal would be the biggest announced takeover in an already busy year Further in this article shows you different um, different mergers and acquisitions that have taken place. This is going to be huge. Mergers and acquisitions at this time are more hot than ever. It's taking place, why? Partially, the same reason that the stock buybacks are occurring is that the money isn't going to good use elsewhere. So they start purchasing each other or buying the shares. Of course, there's more to this, but that is definitely one factor. The top 10 biggest S&P monthly point gains. You can see through our recent history right here, October of the 2015, the current year, the biggest ever on, on this anyway. We're looking at massive point swings that are occurring. And... The volatility doesn't seem to be letting up. I told you just previously about the Federal Reserve and their reverse repos since, let's say, 2014, 2015 has been extremely volatile. So it's not just the stock market that we have to be concerned about, but it's the actions of the Federal Reserve. Remember that the Federal Reserve bails out all banks around the world. We're not sure exactly what their policies are because of the way that it's set up intentionally to provide them a profit. But we have much at stake right here, right now. This is at a Street Talk Live. 
They have very good charts occasionally here. I like to bring them to you. Look at the three black circles here. Sharp declines in earnings signaled in the onset of recession. The font may be a little small for you, so I'll just highlight the first circle being approximately the year 2000. Then we had the financial crisis. That's the second one. And the third one being the current situation. Every time they had a sharp decline with the earnings, sales and shares, as reported earnings, different factors we're looking at here. And they're trying to highlight these the green and the red lines in particular, where they're saying basically that anytime we had this decline, which is all in sync right now, all three of these factors directly in sync, every time they had that, we had a recession after. So remember these facts, very important. In my book, I talked about the tech boom. What I said here was that the average P.E. ratio since 1871 as compiled by Robert Schiller is about 16. I've also heard other numbers of 15 and it doesn't matter, around that number. During the tech boom, on average, it was double to triple that number. Many stocks had P.E. Ratio, ratios at around 100. It's unbelievably high and what happens to any bubble? Well, it pops. This is happening right now today, being supported by many factors which have never been done before. Things that 0% interest rates, for example, for an extended period, the interest rates haven't been raised in nearly a, a decade. What do you think is going to happen from this? It's a bubble. This is a tulip mania going on right now. But I assure you, we haven't seen anything yet compared to where they're going to go. People are asking, Look, if there's so much money printing going on, why don't I see wheelbarrows of cash? Why don't I see all those things that you fear mongers are talking about? Well, I don't know what anybody else is talking about, but we haven't even gotten a fraction of where we're going to head. And it could take off pretty fast. As soon as we get a sense of real deflation occurring, it's going to snowball. That deflation will signal to the Federal Reserve, to all central banks around the world, to hit the printing presses. I want to switch gears over into WAR. I'm not allowed to say the word because then YouTube will censor me. But no, seriously, the war that's taking place right now, I'm seeing a lot of activity going on in between Russia and in between the U.S., commenting on the potential involvement of U.S. ground troops against ISIS in Iraq and Syria, Kosachev once again highlighted that when it comes to Syria, the U.S.-led anti-ISIS campaign is already violating international law. Remember that potential troops on the ground, he believes, will violate further these international regulations. So remember that there's something called law, and although in the U.S. they don't like to follow it, but there is something called law, international law, that says you can't just go into a country and then start bombing another country from that. You have to sort of ask for permission. It would be nice. Any operations, air-based operations, ground-based operations in Syria by American forces will be illegal. That's a quote. Kosachev told RT, explaining that Washington has not been invited by Damascus to take part in military operations in a sovereign country. So Assad or Syria basically have said, we don't invite the U.S. here. We don't want you here. Go away. But that doesn't seem to be bothering them. And there's a reason why the U.S. wants to be there on the surface level, of course. They don't want a destabilized Middle East because they want their oil revenues and what have you. And there's so much more going on. Obviously, the military industrial complex, which controls the US, has a different motive here. But I'm just talking about, you know, mainstream media analysis of this. They don't want a destabilization. So they're in there trying to fight ISIS. When we look into it deeper, we find the actual truth. But you can see multiple sides of the story. Out of Bloomberg, America's special operations forces have been engaging in missions for several months 
particularly in the Kurdish-controlled provinces in northern Iraq. I just talked about in my previous video how they are said initially, they said, we're not going to bring troops into Iraq or Syria. Not going to happen. Don't worry about it. I promise. I promise. And then they went back on their word and the Secretary of Defense said, we will, in fact, go into Iraq and Syria. According to Bloomberg, however, they've already gone in. They've been there for a while and it highlights a few of these instances. I'm going to move on to this here. Switching gears again, we're talking about something that's, to me, a little gloomy. But it's a different type of gloomy. Can you believe this? I had to read the facts over and over again because I, I couldn't believe it. We're talking about in Detroit specifically, the proficiency for 8th graders and their reading skills. The percentage of proficient levels was 7%. Only 7% of the students were considered to be proficient in reading, a basic skill. What is that saying about the education system? What is that saying about the health whether that's mental health or physical health, of the people. This is not a good prospect for the future. 7%? I would have expected at least 50, even in the worst scenario. But then you look at the nationwide average, and it is terrible as well. So it's not just one city. This happens to be one very bad city for this case. What's going on? Think about the future. If these test scores are any indication of the future. Of course, it's a small test. It's only eighth graders. Was the test too hard? Was it unfair? I don't know all these details, but it shows you 7%. That's huge. Not a good prospect for the future. That's all I wanted to say. And in a little bit of humor, Right here, how scary are your jack-o'-lanterns? Scarier than you think. According to the Energy Department, which claims the holiday squash is responsible for unleashing greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. That's right, your pumpkin that you carve with your child or different activities, and you put it there to decorate on the front of your balconies, that is polluting the earth. I can't believe that this is even allowed to be printed. This is how they confuse people. This is how they destroy sovereignty and liberty and freedom by telling you that everything you're doing is harming the earth, harming other people in some way. It's sad. The way that people will actually not purchase pumpkins anymore because they say they're going to pollute the earth. I want to do something good for the earth. So therefore, I'm not going to plant this or have this plant. It is an absolute joke. This is just one little small thing that I found. But how ridiculous is this type of news? I've had enough of it. That's all. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. On a personal note, I just wanted to know if you like my introductions as a whole. I usually write a few sentences worth, try to make it nice and entertaining for that first couple sentences, try to draw in new subscribers if possible in that way. I'm interested if you like those introductions, um, just trying to get your uh, gauge on that one. Last but not least, if you found the video informative, you're going to find my book, The Money GPS, even more informative. So head over to Amazon. They have a look inside feature. It allows you to flip through the pages of the book and see if you like it. Take care.